All right, today I want to show you how to add together vectors in two dimensions. And to do that, we're going to take a look at an airplane, which is flying through the air at 30 meters per second. And then we're going to throw in some wind that's blowing this airplane around at 10 meters per second. Now I want to look at several different versions of this problem. But before we do that, I want to look at the biggest misconception that people have when they go into two-dimensional vector addition. And really, that comes from how they learned what a vector really is. You see, typically people learn about vectors when they're talking about one-dimensional motion, like this airplane just moving along towards the east here. You see, a vector is just a quantity, in this case velocity, which has both a magnitude, that is how fast the airplane is actually traveling, and a direction, in this case east. And the first time people usually add together vectors is in one dimension, and so Usually what you'll see is a problem like the plane is traveling east and the wind is blowing at 10 meters per second in the opposite direction or toward the west. And the question goes, how fast is the plane actually traveling relative to the ground? Well, what happens in one dimensional vector addition is if you just say to the right is positive and the left is negative, it's not too hard to see the plane trying to go 30 meters per second to the right is going to get pushed back to the left by the wind, therefore it's only moving at 20 meters per second. And the misconception here is people think that vector addition is really just adding together numbers no different than you added together numbers back when you were learning addition, when you were six years old. But it's not. And it's not until you get into two-dimensional vector addition that this misconception pops up. So to get a two-dimensional vector addition, we're going to look at the first version of this problem where we say the airplane is trying to fly straight to the east, but the wind isn't blowing to the west, it's blowing from the north to the south. And the question here is, we want to know both how fast the airplane is traveling, as well as in which direction it's going to actually move. Now this problem shows up in both physics and pre-calc courses, but typically what you'll see when you talk about adding together vectors in a math class is when you combine vectors together, what you get is what we refer to as a resultant vector, or what we'd call a vector sum. Now usually a vector sum is shown like this, where we show different quantities that we're adding together that result in some certain total. In this case, we have the velocity vector of the plane plus the velocity vector of the wind result in some total velocity or a resultant velocity vector. And the way we show each of these little velocities as being vectors is with a cute little arrow above each of these v's to show that they are in fact vectors. And the thing about this is this isn't actually addition like you learned when you were a little kid. This is something completely different. And the big misconception here that you don't get out of adding together vectors in 1D is that as soon as we're talking about adding together vectors, you can't just add together the magnitudes in order to get a total resultant. I mean, if you look at this as though we have a right triangle here, this leg of the triangle is 30, this other side is 10, but the hypotenuse is not 40. So we can't just add together the magnitudes of these vectors. This isn't that kind of addition. So what we actually need to do is take each of these vectors and we're going to break them up into their components. Now to keep everything nice and neat, what we're going to do is set up a table right here. And our table is going to look at both the horizontal and vertical components of each of our vectors. Now when I say the components of each vectors, what I want to do is I want to look at how much each vector is either acting horizontally or vertically. Now starting with the velocity vector of the plane. The plane is trying to fly through the air at 30 meters per second, meaning its horizontal component is 30, but because the airplane is pointed horizontally or straight east, the vertical component is going to be zero. Now the wind is straight out of the north headed south, so that means the wind is not acting horizontally or in the x-axis at all. So we're going to say that component is zero. And vertically, or in the y-axis, this, this wind is acting at 10 meters per second. And we're going to say that's negative, because anytime we're dealing with vector addition, I like to stick with the convention that anything up and to the right are in the positive directions, meaning this wind vector downward is going to be in the negative direction. Now to find a vector sum, we just add together all of the components within each axis individually. 
That is to say, we add up all of our x components and get our total or resultant component in the x-axis, and we add up all of our components in the y-axis and get our resultant in the y-axis. Now to actually solve for the true speed or velocity of the airplane, we need to find both the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. So given these two components, I want you to realize what we actually have here are the two sides of a right triangle where the true speed of the airplane is the hypotenuse. So to solve for that resultant velocity, as we'd call it, all we're going to do is we're going to take our two components that we found in our table up here, and we're going to put them together using the Pythagorean theorem. And we get the magnitude, we show magnitude with little lines next to it, of our velocity vector. And that is 31.6 meters per second. And next to solve for the angle, knowing both the adjacent and opposite sides of this right triangle, we can solve for theta, knowing that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 10 over 30. Now I always tell people there's a negative here on this 10, and actually what I do with that is I ignore it. If you just toss it out of there, uh, what you can go through and do is just work out the, the number. Your calculator will kick out a positive answer, in this case 18 degrees, and it's up to us to think about what those 18 degrees mean. In this case, those 18 degrees are 18 degrees below the positive x-axis, or what we would call 18 degrees south of east. Now the next version of this problem changes things up a little bit and says, okay, if we wanted our plane to actually travel or have a resultant velocity vector that was pointed east, which way would the plane have to point? You see, if the airplane is going to be pushed towards the south by the wind, that means the airplane is going to have to point itself a little bit north in order to fight that southerly push or downward push by the wind. So really all we're doing is we're solving for this angle right in here, or the direction the plane would have to point relative to the east, in order to have a resultant vector that is pointed directly east. Now to do this, we're again going to set up our table here, and again, looking first at the velocity of the plane. We know the plane's trying to travel 30 meters per second through the air, so we can say the velocity is 30, but we don't actually know the direction the airplane is pointed. So we're just going to say the horizontal component of the plane is 30 cosine theta, where theta is the unknown we're solving for. And the y component is going to be 30 sine theta. That is this component of the plane's velocity vector. Now the wind, on the other hand, is still straight south, so the horizontal component of the wind is going to be 0, and the vertical component is going to be negative 10. Now the trick, or the key, in this entire problem actually has to do with the information we're given about the total velocity vector. Now I don't really care about how fast the plane is going horizontally. What we care about, if we want the plane to actually wind up traveling east, is that the resultant velocity vector is going to have zero component in the y-axis. So adding everything up in this y-axis, we could say 30 sine 30 minus 10, that is the push by the wind, is equal to zero. So rearranging this for theta and solving for theta, we find that if the plane is tilted or turned 19 and a half degrees above the positive x-axis, or what we would call north of east, the resultant velocity vector of the plane will be directed due east. Now for those of you who are wondering, uh, if we work out the horizontal components, we find the resultant velocity vector is 30 cosine 19.5, which works out to be 28 meters per second. Now the last version of this problem is probably the least common, but it's a pretty important one to see anyway and it addresses the question of what if the wind wasn't perfectly from the north? What if the wind was at some angle here? See, if we knew we pointed the plane at 30 degrees north of east, I'm just making that number up, uh, and the wind was traveling at 45 degrees south of east, we want to know the resultant speed and direction of our airplane. And again, just like in the other two problems, we're going to set up our table. Now the airplane is going to be moving horizontally at 30 cosine 30. It has a vertical component of 30 sine 30. Our wind has a horizontal component of 10 cosine 45. 
and a vertical component of 10 sine 45. But remember, that component is toward the south. We're going to say that's negative. Well, if you work out the math on all of these, you find the total velocity in the x-axis is 33, and in the y-axis is 8. So coming up with our total speed, or our magnitude of velocity, we, using the Pythagorean theorem, we find it's actually moving at 34 meters per second, and we find the plane is actually going to be traveling 13 and a half degrees above the positive x-axis, or what we'd call north of east. Now the fact of the matter is you can use this method of setting up a table uh, in order to add vectors, whether they're velocity vectors or displacement vectors or later on force. Uh, there's lots of vectors that show up in physics, and this method will work for any of them. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.